is Colorado's own Channel 2 Day Break at 6. We're on it. It is 6 o'clock here on your Monday morning. Counties across Colorado are dropping the mask mandates if you're fully vaccinated. This morning, some businesses are now following suit. And please have a solemn safety reminder after two deadly cyclist crashes in Lakewood. And here at 6 o'clock, we're glad you're waking up with this Channel 2 Daybreak, biggest team in Colorado. And of course, we've got Katie Orth, our new anchor. Thrilled to have you, Katie. Mm, this little app, here. this is what I call Chris Tomer in your pocket. <laughs> Tomer in your pocket, because you'll get the push alert knowing exactly what happened. We're sorry, Katie, your first weekend was a little uh, overcast. I know. Oh, well. <laughs> the sun, it can only go up from here, right? The sun's coming out. We know it. Yeah, what do they sell the ad, the 300 days of sun? It's actually, I think I figured it out. It's more close to like 275. There you but go. This is going to be one of the, well, yesterday was the same way. It was cloudy, just like this. I was really hoping for more rain out of this thing. Yesterday, we just ended up being cloudy. Uh, it is that same way right now. I think our best chance of rain is this afternoon after like 2 o'clock. We may have a sprinkle early, but I don't see anything appreciable on radar until later today. I'll take you in real close. You can see all the cloud cover gray, maybe a sprinkle to the south. Our future radar keeps it about the same until about 2, and then things start to bubble up into the afternoon. Some rain, some storms come off the mountains. The foothills could roll across Denver and I-25 into the afternoon, evening hours. We may have fog here tomorrow morning and then a sort of a rerun of what we're seeing tomorrow. Uh, so that's on its way. Here's the hourly planner. Sprinkles early and then rain chances go up here this afternoon. I will look at today's rain chances and the amounts and then look beyond this as well coming up. But right now, Ken, let's go over to you. Well, let's take a look. Uh, Sky 2 joins us on this hazy day. Uh, they're out over I-25 right at 6th Avenue. A good start to conditions not only along 25, but 6th Avenue. Those speeds are holding as well. Uh, everything is really starting to green up around town, too, so enjoy it. A lot of green on the map. We've got a couple of backups, one along Western 70, 270, seeing some delays along those ramps. South side of town still remains wide open. If you're wondering about that drive from Castle Rock down into the Springs, don't be surprised if you roll through some foggy areas. But Katie and Chris, no accidents so far on this Monday morning. Good news. Well, a few big chains plan to go maskless moving forward. Costco, Trader Joe's, Walmart, Sam's Club are letting fully vaccinated people ditch those masks. Starbucks will make masks optional. That starts today. Target, CVS, The Gap, Macy's, and other retailers are still considering mask rules. Now, most, uh, most metro area counties are now what's called level clear. That means very few COVID restrictions. Jeff Coe's executive director of public health talked to us about what the changes mean for her county. Now, there are no size restrictions on business or gatherings. Social distancing is pretty much gone. And it's basically up to each business whether or not to mandate the mask. Every member of our community to be respectful of those businesses. And even if you are fully vaccinated, if a business requires a mask, out of courtesy and respect, put the mask on when you enter that business. Lawmakers say you should still wear a mask if you aren't yet vaccinated. Keep it on your ear. Ready right. to go at all One times. Well, Denver also said goodbye to capacity limits and social distancing rules this weekend. Mayor Michael Hancock says face coverings will no longer be required in most settings. Restaurants, retail stores, offices, gyms, and bars can operate at full capacity with no distancing requirements or other limits. Masks will still be required in places like hospitals, nursing homes, child care centers, homeless shelters, jails, and public transportation. Yeah, I got to say quickly, uh, so I went to the gym Friday. No masks. Mm -hmm. I went, I volunteered a homeless shelter, masks. Right, exactly. One restaurant did have masks, another one didn't. So uh, you want to keep it for at least a while because mm -hmm. it does change from That's place right. to place. Well, it was a deadly weekend for cyclists on the road mm -hmm. in Jefferson County as two people were hit and killed. Drew Engelbart live in the newsroom. And Drew, you know, it's a tragic reminder uh, of this time of year as folks are getting out and, and they're cycling again. And a lot of folks like to bicycle here in Colorado, a great outdoor state. So do be aware that a cyclist was hit and killed on Sunday morning and a family also grieving the loss of their 12 year old son that was hit and killed Friday night. So in Lakewood, police say the driver drifted into the bright bike lane and hit a woman who was taken to the hospital where she later died. The driver was arrested and police are now investigating if drug use may have been a factor in that crash. Meantime, Colorado State Patrol says 12 year old Sean Stevenson was riding his bike home and had headphones on near a crosswalk. Sean's mom says he was riding his bike home from Sonic Friday night to make it back in time for dinner. I got in the car to go find him and I asked the police lady, I said, is that a child on a bike? And she said, yes, it is. And I said, I know that's my baby. 
Just a tragic story. Sean's mom says she found out he was not wearing a helmet during the crash, but she says the coroner told her a helmet would not have saved her son since the driver was traveling about 40 miles per hour. Friends of the family there have started to go fund me to help. We have a link if you want to help on our website right now, kwgn.com. But a good reminder, guys, that this is the time of the year when you're going to see a lot of bicycles out there on the road, so do be aware of that. And of course, if you are riding a bike, it's always a good idea to wear a helmet. That's right. Mm, yep. Can't imagine. All right, thank you, Drew. And of course, we'll say prayers for the family. It's a real tough time for them. Hey, one person's hurt after a garage fire happened yesterday. Westminster Fire responding, and they think the homeowner was doing yard work, and a lawnmower might have sparked this whole thing. There was some debris nearby. So the person was injured, but they're going to be okay. And Westminster, meantime, has a warning and a reminder for you. You know, get to safety and call 911. This uh, particular situation, you know, the homeowners always want to go back and use your garden hose or what you can to put it out. And I don't know if that contributed to the injuries or the spread, but number one, get to safety, call 911 so that we can be on our way and help out. They're also reminding you be extra careful when you start up the lawnmower for the first time. Again, you know, there's going to be some sparks. Just don't want anything to happen to your yard. A Denver deputy has died from COVID-19. The sheriff's union says 51-year-old James Herrera contracted the virus in April. He was hospitalized over a month, and sadly, he crossed over Sunday morning. The union believes he contracted the virus while working at the detention center. We've been fighting this battle since COVID started. So we consider, as an organization, along with his children, that this is a COVID-19 line of duty death. Deputy Herrera's colleagues tell us he was just four years away from retirement and he does leave behind two adult children. K-9 Roman is back home after nearly two weeks in the hospital. Some good news here. The dog works with the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office. He got sick 11 days ago and was diagnosed with a deadly colon condition. He survived surgery and beat the odds. Yeah. That's Dr. Uh, Dr. Kevin Fitzgerald's hospital. He'll be on his show a little later on this morning. Well, the death toll is rising as the Israeli-Palestinian conflict rages on. Yesterday's attacks now being cited as the deadliest since last week, which killed 43 Palestinians in a single day. That brings the total death toll in Gaza closer to 200. Yesterday, Israel launched an extensive airstrike campaign over the Gaza Strip. In the attempt to kill innocent Israeli citizens, we have an international backup, and we use it as well as our natural right to defend ourselves. Each time Israel hears a foreign leader speak of its right to defend itself, it is further emboldened to continue murdering entire families in their sleep. Israel is killing Palestinians in Gaza. Over the weekend, people in Denver gathered at a prayer, a rally for peace, uh, to stand in solidarity with the Jewish community. Several rabbis calling for an end to the violence and to mourn those who have been killed. Well, here is 608 mailbox theft. We talked about porch pirates. Now it's just your mailbox, and it's becoming a real problem around the metro. Goodness. How does some neighbors concerned another kind of crime will follow? Identity theft. Mm. Spencer Roche says thieves are targeting his apartment complex. He tells us they're going for anything that looks like it could be a stimulus check, credit card offer, or unemployment benefits card. If it looks like it might contain something good, they're going to go for it. Both these doors will just be wide open and all the mailboxes exposed and mail everywhere. Mm. He says one of his neighbors actually tried to scare the thieves off with a gun. But the best way to protect your mail is by planning ahead. Have your post office hold mail for you if you're expecting something valuable. When you're sending something, put it in the mailbox close to pickup time or make sure to request a signature confirmation. Well, we take a quick look at your business headlines on this Monday morning. Bitcoin prices, they plunged. A massive operation peddling fake Amazon reviews. That's been exposed and streaming companies really cracking down on password sharing. And Americans, well, we are changing our retirement plans. Let's start with Bitcoin as it tumbled below $43,000 uh, per coin over the weekend. During a Twitter exchange, Elon Musk appeared to imply that Tesla has sold its Bitcoin holdings. After Musk clarified that Tesla hasn't sold any, Bitcoin then jumped back up above 45,000. Today it is up a little bit. And a cybersecurity site has uncovered a huge database of fake Amazon reviews. Safety detectives say that it found a server with 13 million records involving hundreds of thousands of people in what it called an organized fake review scam. 
Fake reviews on Amazon have been a long-term problem. One of the most common schemes is to compensate reviewers with free products in return for some good reviews. Well, streaming services, they are cracking down on password sharing. Chris, pay attention. Industry experts say the practice costing the industry billions of dollars. These companies say that they need that money to fund more in-house productions. Recently, Netflix sent out pop-ups asking users to verify their accounts through an email or a text. And also this morning, the pandemic has a lot of Americans changing their retirement goals. According to the market research company Hearts and Wallets, 13% of Americans who plan to retire in five years are under 54. That is much higher than in previous years during pandemic layoffs and furloughs. Now, a lot of workers, they just opted not to go back to the workplace. for some hockey. The Avs are in the playoffs. They get their first game tonight here at the Ball Arena. The question is, how many fans will be allowed inside? We're excited. All right, a two health alert for you this morning. A first of its kind study finds employees around the world are working themselves to death. And you don't have to stay that late at the office for your health to suffer. Pinpoint. All right, this morning, the Avalanche headed to the first round of NHL and mm -hmm. HL playoffs. Their first game tonight at Ball Arena. Now, We're here's excited. the thing. We went to the sports office and we raided the sports office to get some Avs merch because we think Jim Hooley needs to up his game. Jim, we got a banner. We got a puck. We got half of a hockey stick. Let's go Avs. You got all that stuff? Yeah. Yeah, where were you at 4.30 in the morning when I needed <laughs> that stuff, huh? <laughs> Come on. If you woke up a little earlier and came to work on time, we wouldn't have this problem out here. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. I appreciate your hard work, both of you guys. Thank you very much. Hey, and the Avs appreciate it, too. The question is how many fans will be allowed inside here tonight to show their appreciation. You know, there are limits still here at the Ball Arena. And as of right now, as of this morning, the fan limitation, the fan capacity is still limited to 70, just over 7,700 fans. That's about 42% well, capacity here at the Ball Arena. Nonetheless, though, it's going to be a great game tonight. Playoff hockey here in Denver. Here's what's happening out here right now. The Avs wrapped up their regular season last week with a five-game win streak. That's the way to do it. They ended up with the best regular season record in the entire league, winning the NHL NHL's President's Cup, too. And that will give them the home ice advantage in the playoffs starting tonight. That's a big, big advantage. If you're coming tonight, keep in mind, there are still health guidelines that you have to follow, as we mentioned again, capacity limited to 7,750 fans. And as of this morning, again, some of this could change throughout today, but masks are still required inside the arena. You are still being asked to keep your distance, no bags allowed inside, and cash is no longer an accepted form of payment inside the arena. We should probably tell you who the Avs are playing as well. The Blues from St. Louis. They are the people who are going to be here, the players who are going to be here tonight. The St. Louis Blues, as they call themselves, and uh, the game time starting off tonight. Unfortunately, the game is going to start a little bit late for my bedtime. 8 o'clock tonight, but uh, the Avs and the Blues here for game number one of the playoffs here in NHL action in Denver. Live down at the Ball Arena, I'm Jim Hula, Channel 2 News. Thanks All for right. the stuff, you guys. Jim got the fun job today. He did. <laughs> and by the way, you can thank the sports department because we borrowed all yes. this stuff. We have to go return Our it before own. they know what know what we did. <laughs> hey, a lot of spirit around this game tonight, rightfully so. Larimer yeah. Square covered with the Avs banners. You were down there last night. That's great. Go Avs! Go Avs! Jim, we love you. We'll check in with you later on this morning. Yeah. All right. Taxes are due today. Whoop. The filing yeah. deadline was pushed back about a month due to the pandemic. So if you're still not ready, you can file for an extension for October 15th. Any money you owe, though, is still due now. Mm. Otherwise, you could get hit with late payment penalties. More people around the world are working themselves to death. According to this World Health Organization report, 745,000 people died from stroke or heart disease associated with working long hours. The report stems from a study that started in 2016. It's the first global study to link loss of life with longer working hours. One of the big takeaways is the amount of hours it takes to put yourself at risk. Working 55 or more hours per week increased 
risk of dying of ischemic heart disease by 17% after 10 years. We also found working 55 hours or more per week increased the risk of having a stroke by 35%. And the study found this problem overwhelmingly impacts men. 70% of the victims were male and at least middle-aged. Uh-oh. Well, new this morning, two people have been detained in connection to a wildfire burning near Pacific Palisades, California. The fire broke out Friday in the Santa Monica Mountains. About 1,000 residents have been evacuated now. More than two square miles have been burned. Luckily, though, no homes have been lost. Well, the mayor of New Orleans saying right now residents need to prepare for hurricane season. We had a producer just go down there for vacay, but it's never too soon. This year's hurricane season is going to be above average. Nine storms hit New Orleans last year. We are live and local on it right now. Some breaking news to the Channel 2 newsroom. Sky 2 is over the scene of this reported shooting in Denver. This is in the 1700 block of West Mosier Place. Please tell us one person is being treated for a gunshot wound. No additional information at this point. We're keeping a close eye on it. We'll let you know the latest. But if that is part of your morning drive, obviously, can let you know how to get around it. Again, uh, they're responding there to a shooting. One person being treated for an injury. Chris Tomer. Good to see you on a Monday. Yeah, likewise. Uh, I wanted to, you talk about skiing a lot in Colorado. Now, uh, Katie, we start to melt that snow yeah. as we ah, head through spring. In some needs places, more sunshine. Yes, in some places in southern Colorado, already way along the path of the spring melt. Look at this. This is Purgatory Ski Area near Silverton and Durango. Oh. It, it's right. It's already melting out down there. You can see all the runs. That is not the case closer to Denver. A lot of the front range peaks from Loveland, a base and all the way up in Rocky Mountain National Park are still loaded with snow. We've had most of the accumulation of rain and snow over the last 30 days close to the Denver area. If we get anything this afternoon, I think it's going to be garden variety in Denver, but it could be severe. Slight risk for that in the yellow shaded area for southeast Colorado. The storm that will do it is this one. You can see the spin around the low. It'll take a track kind of following the yellow arrow. And as it does, it will continue to push cloud cover and some rain chances in our direction. But mainly in the afternoon, you watch the clock here on the future radar. And here comes our chance of rain. Notice building over the mountain. Mountains, and then they'll kind of roll across Denver through this afternoon into tonight. Look how big they could be down in southeast Colorado. And then we'll get a little bit of a break. We may have some fog here tomorrow morning. One last sort of outer band, if you will, of this low to pass through during the day tomorrow. Not talking about a lot of rain. We really missed out on it yesterday, but we could pick up between today and tomorrow another two tenths to five half an inch, roughly, of additional rain here. Looking at the seven day forecast, today and tomorrow are the highest percentage shots at this. Then things start to dry out. The temperatures will go up. Look at Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Ken Clark. We're going to be at 75 to 80, and it should be dry around here. All right, guys, back to you. All right, make sure to bring those umbrellas this week. Have that on at hand. At least till Wednesday, yeah. Wow. All right, well, heads up if you're looking to get outside in Boulder. A popular trail is temporarily closed for maintenance. And it's a beautiful one. Plus, you will not believe what the government is about to give away. Why the Coast Guard is trying to unload these lighthouses. Could you live there? Yes. <laughs> Plus, too. how you can qualify to get one for free. Oh, oh. that's my price right there. And then I just got hey, welcome back to 624. Thank you so much for waking up with Colorado Zone. We love this state. We know every trail. Royal Arch Trail. Tomer's been there before. Closures start today, by the way. Told you last week, crews are starting repair work. They're installing an 18-foot bridge, building some stairs, get hikers across an eroded section of the trail. So it'll open again on Thursday, and then there'll be a complete closure starting June the 7th. Chris Turmer, wasn't the best weekend to get out and do some hiking, although it was cooler. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, just a lot of clouds. I was hoping mm -hmm. that we would get some more uh, rain yesterday. You know, we just really didn't end up getting much of anything other than cloud cover. Today, we have a slightly better shot at this in the afternoon hours. Not going to be all that warm either by uh, late May standards, upper 50s. We'll probably do it here for Denver and the Front Range. Now, coming up in the next hour, we'll look at uh, these rain chances on the future radar and how much we could potentially get Coming up. All right, Clark, over to you. Well, let's take a look off to the uh, west along that drive. A couple of snapshots at I-70 up near the tunnel drying out, uh, looking good. There's the uh, drive 
at the uh, tunnel, and this is the eastbound side of I-70, kind of coming in from the Genesee area. So outside the city, speeds across 70 are holding. Now Metro Denver looks great, um, but weather-wise, Sky 2 showing you that heavy cloud cover and fog in some areas. So you'll be dealing with that throughout the morning, but we're not looking at any new problems. We did tell you earlier about that overnight shooting that's taking place down along kind of Mississippi, just west of Santa Fe. It's in this neighborhood along Mosier Place. So do look for some delays around Quivis. If you live in that area, you're going to find some alternate routes, but once you gain access onto the interstates, those speeds are holding. Well, starting today, you can have your coffee and drink it too, mask free. New rules at Starbucks. If you're fully vaccinated, face coverings are optional. We'll break down the rules coming up. And after a year of missed milestones, DU is doing something special to honor grads who couldn't walk the stage last spring. Channel 2 News Daybreak. This is breaking news. Welcome back. And new this morning here at 630, the CDC is clarifying the mask policy for our kids and our schools. While well, one of the biggest districts in Colorado plans its own new guidelines and counties continue to loosen restrictions, big businesses about to follow suit. What a difference the weekend makes. Thank you for starting your week with us here on Channel 2 Daybreak. I am grinning ear to ear. Yes, it's Monday, I know, and the skies are gray, but look who we got, Katie Orth, our new Daybreak anchor. Good to see you, Katie. Ah, it's good to be here. Although the clouds are a little gray, we know the sunshine's coming, right, Tomer? It will eventually. I know that's what you want, and we're famous for that here, but not today. Yesterday and today are kind of rare, right? Yesterday we'd hope for more rain with the clouds. We just didn't get it, and it's very cloudy this morning. Typically, you'd be able to see all the way back towards the foothills and the mountains. Can't see it right now. There's a lot of moisture just kind of hanging in the air. Clouds are here. Storm is still way off to the southwest, so I really don't expect much here across Denver, the Front Range, until this afternoon. You can see maybe a sprinkle early, but watch our future radar and our satellite things start to go after about two o'clock. We'll see some rain and storms develop over the mountains, even snow up high, and then some of that will sweep across Denver and the Front Range. We'll get a break, some fog probably tomorrow morning before we have another round tomorrow afternoon. My hourly day planner looks like this. Again, maybe a sprinkle early, then cloudy, and some rain coming in probably after about two o'clock this afternoon. We'll look at that rain, the amounts, all of that coming up in a few minutes, but Ken, let's go over to you now. Yeah, we're taking a quick peek from the chopper that we've got just a couple of more moments before they land. This is their inbound flight. Uh, they're landing because of the foggy and cloudy conditions through the metro area. So we're just taking one last look. But we have a pretty good rush hour on our hands so far this morning. Uh, Coors Field in downtown Denver. If you're heading into the city, no major delays across 25, 76 and 270. That run is backed up. But if you're up in Fort or up in the North Glen and Thornton areas, a little bit of a delay around 120th, but no new highway accidents. Uh, downtown Denver is still kind of busy. We're Monitoring an earlier crash, Mosier is still dealing with this closure over near Quivis uh, for an overnight shooting. So you are finding some details or rather some delays through there as you take the detour. But speeds across 25, even along 6th Avenue, they are holding. We'll take a look at that drive from Castle Rock into the Springs here, guys, coming up. All right, traffic flowing nicely this morning. Thanks, Ken. Well, the CDC's mask updates will not apply to school children. Yeah, a lot of moms and dads are asking, what happens to the mask? at school. So the guidelines say schools will follow the same prevention rules that have been in place since last September. The news may come as a disappointment to some parents who were hoping to get things back to normal. Health officials say, you know, since most school kids remain unvaccinated, masks will still be needed. Our school guidance for 20, for in, to complete this school year will not change and we'll be working on uh, school guidance for the fall. We are actively working on that now and we're actively doing outreach with the community to do so as well. Now, many districts across the country have started breaking with CDC guidelines uh, when a report exposed the extensive role that teachers unions actually played in drawing up these rules. Starting today, Jefferson County Public Schools will make some changes to its health protocols. In-person meetings among staff, adults can be held without masks if everyone's vaccinated. Masks will not be required for any outdoor activities. And students don't need to wear masks during recess or anything outside, and they don't need to stick with their cohorts at recess either. The district says masks must still be worn inside till the end of the school year.
Many big and national retailers are now saying that customers can ditch the masks. Happening today, Starbucks says masks are optional for those fully vaccinated. I've said it all morning. I'm the one-year dangler because most places are starting to drop them. Some still require mm -hmm. it. So don't get rid of the mask altogether. The good news is our own Carly Moore is live at a Denver Starbucks about to go in and <laughs> order all of us coffee to demonstrate <laughs> how it works. That's right. Oh yeah, good morning, Chris and Katie. Welcome to the team. So take a look at this. It looks like a regular mask sign when you first at your first glance, but then you can read the print there. If you are fully vaccinated, facial coverings are optional. So Starbucks and other big chains say if local mandates still require mask stores with will follow that guidance. Governor Jared Polis announcing Friday all Coloradans can go mask free in almost all settings. If you're vaccinated, if you have not had the COVID vaccine, you are still required to wear a mask in some places, including hospitals, assisted living facilities. Most Denver area counties dropped pandemic capacity and mask restrictions starting yesterday, going to what's called level clear. Individual businesses can still require masks and proof of vaccinations at Denver restaurants this weekend. Some excited to go maskless, others still cautious. It was um, a little shocking for me, um, a little awe-dropping because it's been so long. It's been, you know, a little just over that year for us. And so to hit that mark a little bit after the year is kind of cool, a little crazy. Um, definitely takes some getting used to. Most metro businesses are not asking for proof of vaccination. They're just using the honor system. Walmart, Sam's Club, Costco and Trader Joe's were some of the first big retailers to go mask free, making those announcements on Friday. Other big chains, including Target, CVS and King Supers are still requiring masks as of this weekend. Now, while customers here at Starbucks can go mask free, according to their website, Starbucks employees are still required to have a two ply mask or double mask. Now, though this is a new rule starting today, I haven't seen anyone actually walk in without a mask. Everyone still has those masks pretty handy. Reporting live in Denver, Carly Moore, Channel 2 News. Carly, there's only one person in line. It's yeah, what are, you waiting, what are you waiting for, Carly? <laughs> uh, go ahead, go on in there, Carly. Carly, go on in. We'll, right. we'll, we like cream okay. and two Splenda. Cream to Splenda, <laughs> there right. she goes. God, she's a good reporter and she's a friend awesome. of this show, buying our coffee. Oh, look, she's getting in line. We love it, Carly. <laughs> we love you, Carly. <laughs> oh, that's a great job out there. Hey, talk about the restrictions. They are being lifted in Aurora as well. Mayor Mike Kaufman saying that restaurants and businesses can operate at 100% capacity. City will also follow the governor's mask guidance. He says anyone who is not vaccinated uh, won't be required to wear a mask, but ought to. Country. Summit County officials have already lifted most of their mask mandates. Their new health order has already gone into effect. There are some exceptions for child care centers, hospitals, and people who are visiting assisted living facilities. All right now to breaking news just into our newsroom. Our Vada Cruz is on the scene of this building fire. This is at Raleigh and 70th. Sky 2 flew over it just a few minutes ago before the fog forced them to land. You can see a lot of first responders there on scene. Of course, we're waiting on more information. We'll bring it to you as soon as we get it. Keep an eye on that for sure. It looks like a little smoke from the top story there. Meantime, here at 637, a lot of students around the country, we know it's been a tough year. They missed out on in-person graduation last spring thanks to the pandemic. And yesterday, DU had a special ceremony for those who couldn't walk across the stage last year. With everything going on, you know, it was a little overwhelming, but it was just, you're so close, so you kind of just push through anyway. It was very depressing because going into this program, you knew that you just wanted to finish and walk across that stage and receive that degree, and to have that taken away from you was just the most devastating thing ever. About 500 of last year's 3,000 DU grads returned for different graduation ceremonies, and to every kid out there, college, high school, I hope you take a moment and pat yourself on the back. What an honor. You did it, y'all, in a year unlike any other. I am so proud. Look at all the great things these graduates can do. If you can get through this year and graduate, the world is your oyster. Well, here at 638, it's a terrible loss. A family grieving the death of their 12-year-old son. He was hit and killed Friday night. Happened at the intersection of Ken Carroll and Chatfield there in Littleton. Beautiful young kid. He was just riding his bike. Sean Stevenson's his name. He was struck and killed near a crosswalk. CSP says the car that hit him did have the right of way. We're told Stevenson was wearing headphones and 
did not have a helmet. He said he died instantly. So he had no suffering, which is good. The driver did stop and they were not cited. Meantime, friends of the family have started a GoFundMe page. If you'd like to step up and reach out, we have a link to that GoFundMe right on our website, kwgn.com. And police investigating a deadly crash involving a, cycling, a cyclist off of Alameda Parkway in Lakewood. In this case, officers say the driver drifted into the bike lane and hit a woman. Responders brought her to the hospital. She later died, and the driver did stay on the scene but was arrested in this case. And investigators are trying to figure out if drug use may have been a factor. And here at 639, it's a story going viral on our website. A number of moms attending a large volleyball tournament at the convention center tell us they were asked to leave or to not even come in, all because they had their babies with them. A coach and owner of a Utah girls volleyball team was denied access into the tournament two days in a row because she had her baby with her. She wasn't the only one. Several players' moms who tried to enter with their nursing infants were turned away. Organizers cited their COVID rules as the reason, but one group of women got together to make a stand. A small group of mothers gathered in front of the convention center on Sunday to rally in support of the moms and coaches who were being turned away. I'm just so proud that they are able to see the bigger part of this and how much it means and for their futures knowing what it means to stand up for what's right and what they should be entitled to do. And according to the Colorado Cross website, all guests had to be 16 years or older. It does not specify, though, if infants apply. Huh. We wanted to know what the law says, because obviously this event was being held in a place of public accommodation. So we reached out to attorney Kimberly Jones. It's certainly an emerging area of, of law, even in 2021. Uh, unfortunately, you know, nursing moms are still working hard to try and um, be able to have a seat at the table, if you will. Now, Jones went on to tell us that the venue is obligated to ensure they're not discriminating on the basis of sex, which would include lactation discrimination. During a meeting Sunday morning, the leader of the tournament actually doubled down on her rule and claimed the whole demonstration is just a stunt to try and tarnish the name of the tournament. Morning, Ken. Hey, buddy, you there? Ken. All right, Ken, listen, I'll take it over. I think the mic might have gone out. Some big news for local high school football teams. The far Northeast Warriors are the 5A state champions. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. They beat Boulder 34-0 to zero to secure the title after appearing in three championship games in the past. You hold that trophy high, fellas. Congratulations. Here's a look at some of the other state champs that secured titles. Thomas Jefferson took home the 4A title. Rifle, 3A crown. Uh, Manitou Springs, the 2A crown, and finally, uh, is that Haney? I don't know if I've heard of that high school. How do you pronounce that? Anybody know? Hmm. I want to give Hone. them their props. Hone, I maybe? <laughs> I'd like to know. Somebody tweet me so we can give them their props. They uh, get the eight-man crown. So congrats to all of our athletes. Again, making it happen during a pandemic. Hey, some new information as a hiker is recovering after being rescued in Pitkin County. Happened Saturday, a 33-year-old who is developmentally challenged, well, he became separated from the rest of his group. Search streams found him around 9 p.m. along North Thompson Creek. Authorities have not yet released an update on that man's condition. All right, we're keeping an eye on breaking news this morning here on Channel 2 Daybreak. Our live crew is on the scene of this reported shooting. This is in the 1700 block of West Mosier Place. Denver, please tell us one person is being treated for a gunshot wound right now. We're on it. And coming up all new at 6 o'clock this morning, guys, this week marks a new campaign to help protect the natural resources that Colorado has to offer. And there's a way that you can get involved. There's a growing push to cancel the Olympics once again. Japan's shockingly low vaccination rate may be a role. Your pinpoint weather hour by hour forecast is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Home to cars, trucks, and SUVs. Built Ford Proud. 
Well, Bar Lake Park has been named a gold standard site. The recognition comes from the Leave No Trace Center for Outdoor Ethics. There are just 13 of these parks in the country. Two others are in Colorado, Castlewood Canyon, and Roxboro State Park. So to earn the distinction, the park needs to train all staff in Leave No Trace Ethics post leave no trace messaging at campsites, trailheads and visitor centers, and hold programs like ranger talks, campfire events, and trail outings. Well, if you get a minute, talk to our producer Cole. He's an Eagle Scout. They have a whole song about leave no trace. And by the way, this is Care for Colorado Week. It's a new effort between Colorado Parks and Wildlife, our tourism office, and the leave no trace for outdoor ethics. So. Drew Engelbart, have you heard Cole's song about Leave No Trace? It's very catchy and all the scouts sing it. I wish you would sing it in my ear right now. Cole, can you do, do it, that? No, let me read first. That might be tough <laughs> to listen idea. to someone singing and reading at the same time. But Chris, let me tell you about Care for Colorado Week. It's all about protecting our state's natural resources and making sure that everyone can enjoy them every day. The campaign is talking about a different Leave No Trace principle to help accomplish those goals. So today, it's leave it as you find it. That means you should be leaving plants, rocks, and historical items as you find them, this way that other visitors will be able to see them too. So if you're staying in a campsite, cabin, hut, or yurt, take all your trash with you. Leave the spot in better shape than you found it and follow the instructions for use. Finally, leave the wildflowers alone. Snap a photo, take a picture, but don't pick them because this ties in with another Leave No Trace principle the campaign talked about during the weekend. Finally, stick to the trails. Even tiny wildflowers like these can be older than you are and walking off the trails can do some serious damage. Even if the trails are muddy, stay in the middle of the trail especially when they're muddy, because that could really impact uh, the wildlife that you're around. Now, try to stay within the trail, even when you're passing other people as well. And Chris, I know the saying is, leave it as you find it, but I think leave it better than you found it. That's what I do on daybreak every morning, so I think that's better. <laughs> is that what you do? <laughs> you know what, you're right. You do make this place a better place. Leave no trace, leave no trace. There are seven principles to leave no trace. That's Not the old bad. There you go. Thank you. I want to hear Drew sing next time. Well, one of those scout <laughs> principles and one of those uh, leave no trace principles is no before you go. <laughs> right, of course. Uh. That's very best in the business, but Chris Tomer. The scouts are watching you. Well, yeah, I was just going to say you heard the newsroom erupt when, when Drew said that. They, everybody just... In laughter? Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was great, though. Uh, but yeah, know before you go. I mean, that's going to be the key to success this summer because the afternoon thunderstorm pattern is already beginning to kick in. And so you'll want to get out early on most of these, uh, these high peaks and hikes that you may be doing. This is uh, Winter Park. And obviously, Mary Jane, way back there, it's all closed now. The last day for Mary Jane was yesterday. You can already see the melting process going on, and there's the alpine slide beginning to emerge yeah. up there. Uh, so any thunderstorms this afternoon in Denver will be much uh, just marginal garden variety. If you want to see a severe storm, you're going to have to go down into the yellow shaded area in southeast Colorado. Here's the setup. So our storm system right here is going to be moving towards Colorado, continuing to lift clouds and even some rain chances in our direction, but mainly this afternoon for the rain. You can see it on the pinpoint weather app, cloudy most of the morning. Then the rain storm chances go up 40, 50, 60 percent in some areas, highs upper 50s and low 60s. There's our cloud cover in white on the future cast. Here comes our chance, our best chance in the afternoon after two o'clock and that chance runs through tonight with showers and storms coming off the mountains and foothills tomorrow morning probably going to have another round of fog around here and then one last wave of rain and storms to come through for tomorrow not talking about a lot of total rainfall between tomorrow night it today and tomorrow night it two tenths to about a half an inch and that'll probably do it up and down i-25 over the next seven days so with the higher chances of rain today and tomorrow the cooler highs then we begin to warm up 75 to 80 wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday ken we're looking good saturday sunday That'll be nice. Uh, off to the west, you were talking about those ski resorts that are closed. Boy, the drive across 70, it's totally dry. A snapshot at the tunnel uh, behind me. This is that run coming in from the Genesee area uh, back towards Metro Denver. We do have a fairly hazy start. Push the uh, helicopter back in for an early landing. Live look out at the airport this morning. Now, uh, we're tracking just a few delays. We've got a couple of problems. Overnight shooting, the delays across 270, I-76, all there this morning. No new crashes through this area, but some slow driving. Uh, you are going to find uh, conditions and trip time starting to stretch out a little bit. But as far as the rest of the drive is concerned, there's just not a lot happening. 225 is backed up. They're working a crash along High Street and Mosier still dealing with a uh, closure as police investigate an overnight shooting. Chris, Katie, back to you.
Thank you much, Ken. I need your uh, goal foghorn, Ken, because we're going to be hearing a lot of that. The Avs, their push for the Stanley Cup begins tonight, my friends, right over there at Ball Arena. They are the number one seed in the West, and they face St. Louis tonight. Series, best of seven. Game one starts at eight. Game two also in town. And then Wednesday, it's going to be at 830. Kind of past our bedtime, Katie. Pop quiz. How many Stanley Cups have the Avs won? Oh, Lord. <laughs> You know what? Drew Engelbart would know that. He's the sports guru. I Googled that yesterday. Oh, trying so to read up on my abs. And what's the answer? Two. Here we go. It's pretty good. Let's go for a third. How about that? As the Nuggets, their playoff season is about to begin. They lost last night against the Blazers, 123 to 116. But despite that loss, the Nuggets are the number three seed in the Western Conference. They're right behind Utah and Phoenix. They'll play Portland, the number six seed. The NBA has not announced when they'll play. The Nuggets Twitter is saying, see you next weekend. We'll keep you updated. Let's go sports. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the non-sports guy. I'm like, go sports. <laughs> All right, a bizarre story out of Houston, a tiger. Remember that tiger wandering around a neighborhood has been found. The former owner's wife, seen in the video, turned it over to authorities. Tiger's just nine months old. It'll now go to a sanctuary. Officials say the woman is not facing any charges for illegally housing the tiger. Her husband, however, was arrested last week for evading police. All right, so Carol Baskin paying up. Oh, yeah, Carol Baskin offered a Five reward. Thousand, yeah. I wonder if Carol Baskin's going to pay up. We'll see. All right. Lighthouses have always meant a lot to me, and anybody in recovery knows about the power of the lighthouse. How would you like to own one? The government's giving away two lighthouses in Rhode Island. I think they're stunning, aren't they? I mean, can you? It looks like the setting for a movie. So Currently, the Coast Guard owns them. So only certain groups can apply to get it for free. Uh, so it would include federal agencies, state and local governments, nonprofits, educators, re Parks and Rec, Morning News anchors, <laughs> I believe, are on that list. I would totally live in that lighthouse, unplug. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wouldn't that be great, Tomer? Yes. Oh. Although I see some people walking on the street. They, you can't take your phone. You're trespassing. Yeah, no phone, no service. I would love to live there. I wonder Georgia. how high those property taxes are. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Delta, the first major airline to require COVID-19 vaccines for all new hires. They employ about 74,000 people, and they say at least 60% of our received the vaccination. That new policy goes into effect today. Nearly two dozen people in Arizona got stranded after a roller coaster stalled mid-ride at a uh -oh. local amusement park. Uh-oh is right. Riders were per perched about 20 feet off the ground at Castles and Coasters Saturday. Members of the Phoenix Fire Department rescued all 22 people, so no one got hurt. That's good news, and we don't know what caused that freeze up. Were they? They weren't upside down, were they? You mean dangling, dangling oh upside down? Ooh, boy. Oof. Well, opposition to the 2021 Olympic Games is growing in Japan. Several polls say a majority of Japanese want the games canceled for a second time. Japan is only reporting 34 infections per 100,000 people. Their issue is with the vaccination rate. Mm. In the U.S., about 38% of the population is fully vaccinated. Japan has only administered enough doses to fully vaccinate 2% of its population. It's pretty low. Japan has dealt with several big vaccine scares during the last few decades. Well, the country's largest pipeline back to normal operations after last week's cyber attack. Well, that's some welcome news. The Colonial mm -hmm. Pipeline now delivering millions of gallons hourly. Hackers slammed the Georgia-based company with the ransomware attack, caused some gas shortages up and down the East Coast. It'd likely take a couple more days before those shortages finally ease up. Well, a newlywed Colorado woman is hoping the community can help her out to find her irreplaceable engagement ring. This is why I bought ring insurance. Very uh, you smart. just, you just yeah. never know. This ring is very special, mm -hmm. and there's no way it can be replaced or duplicated. The main stone was made with her grandma's ashes, and right around that stone are stones taken from the necklace that her now husband made for her on the birthday before their engagement. There was just so much thought and care that we put into creating it because it was supposed to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience and a once-in-a-lifetime ring. Happened about two weeks back at the Delaterra Mountain Chateau. That's up there in Estes Park. So she reported the missing ring to police. She's offering a cash reward. Bottom line is if you see a little ring up there in Estes Park, you might just make her day. Yes, uh, uh, or life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but either way, we, know, we want to remind the bride that, you know, the thought and the love cannot be lost. Yeah. Bottom line. Very sentimental, though. Oh, I can't imagine.
All right, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Yes. Got some eagle eyes up there in Estes Park. All right. Hey, the big boom bash, ladies and gentlemen, back on in Lakewood, the 4th of July celebration. They announced over the weekend, Lakewood police, that they're going to do it again, and they don't want folks to bring their own personal fireworks to town. They say, guess what? City has got your entertainment covered. And by the way, the fireworks show will be Saturday, July the 3rd. Oh, I'm going to play 1812 Overture while they're at it. We're going to keep it live and local for you all morning long. Up next, to mask or not to mask? That is the question. As restrictions are lifted quickly across the metro, what you need to know before you head out the door. Plus, an urgent reminder from law enforcement about sharing the road. Two bicyclists lost in our community. One of them, a 12-year-old boy. And it's hockey night in Denver. The Avs, the team to beat. We're going to break down the series against St. Louis next.